this is known as the Russell's Viper. Uh, the scientific word for it will be the Boya Russelli Russelli. This particular Russell's Viper is the Sri Lankan Russell's Viper. The difference between the Indian Russell's Viper and the Sri Lankan version is that the Sri Lankan Russell's Viper inhibits a hemotoxin as well as a neurotoxin. This snake is, why I would say, one of the prettiest snakes uh, in Sri Lanka and it attributes to the highest incidences of agricultural hazard in Sri Lanka. Um, just go ahead and take this particular snake and introduce what's going on with this snake and what, what reason it's here for. The reason I'm very delicate with this snake is to show you the total concept of Kandalama Hotel is that this snake basically encountered a uh, injury from a passing vehicle. This particular snake is very prone to come to uh, dusty roads at night after a light shower. What basically happened to this snake was that it was run over by a car and this snake was brought to the care of Sanat, who Sanat has successfully rehabilitated even though he cannot uh, medically attend to it because he lacks the uh, assistance of any kind of veterinary services here and this is what we are trying to do with him is to establish a veterinary based assistance program to them in uh, reptiles that are gone ahead and uh, uh, encountered with such damages here. This particular snake is, uh, I'm not supposed to be this close to it but I am because I know that its strike radius right now is limited because of its back injury but normally you do not want to be near this snake so much because the momentum of the snake and its and its strike is extremely extremely fast this is one of the true vipers in Sri Lanka because it does not have the L'Oreal pit and it is one of the true Russell's vipers of Sri Lanka the back has been basically severed here and even though the snake is uh, injured I have to be very cautious because this is not a snake to be bitten by the particular venom components of the snake is a hemotoxin so basically by that we mean is a blood destroying agent and it is an anticoagulant and also a procoagulant uh, there is some neurotoxicities that are also encountered from this snake such as ptosis and a little bit of myotoxicity but uh, but 90% uh, of envenomation is mainly with hemotoxicity with this particular snake and it, you don't want to be bitten by this specific snake so anyway to basically demonstrate a little bit of the uh, the, the fangs of the snake you'd want to use the three finger technique for the Russells because the Russells have also been known to bite through the lower jaw and pin you at the thumb so whenever you catch these Russells the ideal technique will be is like catching a crotaline snake is with the three finger technique so you limit it from opening its mouth and just to show you the capacity of its fangs uh, be using a sexing probe to show you the particular length of these fangs of this snake and it'll bite look at that we have a pair of fangs that are about half an inch to five eighths of an inch in, in length here are the fangs and basically the fangs are encased in a sheet and they're folded against the roof of the mouth so in striking it basically uh, strikes at 90 degrees uh, to the to the victim these fangs are readily shed and at the moment they shed there are other ones to replace it immediately so just wanted to show you the hyper this is nature's true hypodermic needle right here I'll release this snake back and let Sanat relocate this snake back this snake basically also for a little bit of note is normally a snake that is encountered in the night it is basically nocturnal but it is highly alert in the daytime it's pattern of the lozenges are so beautifully marked that this snake uh, camouflages so well with its surroundings with the dirt with the leaves and all of the other substrate that basically hides in where it hides in it is very commonly encountered in paddy cultivation due to the fact that it uh, pursues uh, rats it is a prolific rat eater and it is a very medically it is medically important as well as a in the eco aspect it is a very important snake as well because it keeps the rodent population down also this snake is a live bearer and it's a prolific breeder and it normally produces clutches of at least 20 or more
How long have you had this snake basically under your care? Uh, two weeks. About two weeks yes, too? Two weeks. Okay, right. And this was of, of a runover? Runover. In, in the night? In the night. Right, right, right. And this is also a common snake of this area, Samad? Yes, very common. Very common snake, okay. Have you known people that have been bitten by this snake in the area? Uh, this was the incidents that are done by these. Snakes are common. Okay. Have there been deaths that are noted from this snake as well in the area that you know of? Treatments at, at, at Venom that is currently available at Dambula Hospital. I see. Okay. And uh, even though people think that the uh, Russell's Viper has the longest fangs of the Sri Lankan snakes, uh, that's not true according to Anselm de Silva. The longest fangs of any Sri Lankan Viper is held by the Green Pit Viper, second to seconded by the Russell's Viper. So currently the status of this particular snake is Sanath is going to hold on to this snake for at least a few more months till the snake is able to uh, get healed and also go ahead and feed the snake. Uh, right now the snake is not able to go ahead and feed on its own so most of the time when this snake is fed Sanath has to force feed this snake and that is something that's very dangerous but that is what he has to do at this time. Because if this snake is not tended to and looked after, this snake will die. And uh, the whole concept of ecotourism and, and conservation is uh, being dedicated to taking care of injured specimens like this. And that's why we have such volunteer and dedicated people like Sanat that are willing to take the time, invest it, and make sure that these snakes get the uh, appropriate treatment and that are relocated back into the wild.